Who knew you could get this excited about highlighters? <laughs> Hi everybody, today I am going to be giving a long requested review. I have had people ask me about what my favorite highlighters are or to give my thoughts on mild liner highlighters. I've used them for years now. For at least a year and a half, I've used them every day. I've never really given a review or a standalone video on them. So I got the most recent pack of them and I figured this would be a perfect time to go over the whole range. I have all five sets, talk about them, talk about which colors I like, which colors I don't like so much, talk about how they've held up after being used for a whole year. And I'm gonna make a new swatch page in my new swatch book. So that's what we're gonna do today. These are Zebra Mild Liners. If you've never seen these before, you probably don't spend as much time on Bullet Journal Instagram as I do. These tend to be the highlighters du jour. The highlighters, these ones and the Stabilo ones, which I've never actually tried before. If you want me to try those, let me know in the comments below. These tend to be one of the top highlighters used in the world of bullet journaling. I've seen them in like study groups. And the reason why, as best as I can nail down is that A, there's a huge variety of colors and B, most of the colors, their name is mild liners and it's true. Most of the colors are fairly mild, desaturated and just soft as opposed to super in your face fluorescent and bright. I like that personally. You can get packs of like 15 of them on Amazon or you can buy them individually on places like Jet Pens or you can buy them by the set. So I'm going to link down below some of the sets on Amazon and those are affiliate links PS, but I'm also using jet pens as a, as a reference because they sell individual ones. So on jet pens, you can get a 15 color bundle of them for $18. You can get a five pack of them for $6.50 unless you get the newest five pack, which is $7.50. And individually on jet pens, you can get them for $1.50. There's a Japanese stationery store called Maido, which is in Japantown here in San Francisco. I've seen them sold there before as well, just individually. Sometimes you see them at Michael's individually, sometimes elsewhere. So you just gotta keep your eyes open for them. They're getting more and more popular. And you can also get a pack of 15 of them, the original three sets, which I'll talk about at Target. If you're looking for the most inexpensive way to get them, the 15 pack at Target is $16.99, which I think is probably the cheapest you'll find that particular pack. But like I said, it only has the 15 and it, you have to be able to find it in Target in store. If you go to Amazon, they currently have the complete five pack set. So 25 mild liners for $30, which is a pretty decent deal. If you buy all five of them on jet pens, assuming that they are all in stock, you will spend $32 plus shipping on Amazon. It's free shipping. So your best bet if you wanna get all five sets is Amazon. If you wanna buy individual packs or if you wanna buy individual pens, then there's a whole bunch of different ways you can purchase them. There are five total packs and I'm going to use the names on jet pens to refer to them. The original three sets, this one is the mild and fluorescent color set. Then this pack is the cool and refined color set. And then this one is the warm, <clears throat> and then, I'm sorry, my voice is going. I've been, I'm filming this the week after my surgery and my, I'm just, I'm still feeling a little funky. So if I sound a little rambly, that's why. And then this set is the deep and warm color set, deep and warm, <laughs> that's what she said. And then the newer sets are this one, which is the friendly color set. <laughs> and then this is the newest one. And this is the bright color set overall. Before I say anything else, I will tell you right now that of these sets, my favorite set with the most colors I like is actually probably a toss up between the two newer sets, the Friendly set and the Brights color set. Both of these sets I think are gorgeous and I think each of them only has one color I'm not too big of a fan of, but the rest of them I love. Of the original three sets, this one, the Cool and Refined set is my favorite color set. And this one here, the Warm and, what is it? Warm and, Deep and warm set, oh yeah. This is my least favorite out of all of them. There's only one color in this set I really like and that's the uh, magenta, but the rest of the colors, maybe the smoke blue. But for the most part, this is the color set that I 
like the least. Let's talk about the anatomy of a mild liner. Not a mid liner, I know a lot of people think that's what it is, it's mild liner. And the reason they're called mild liners is like I said, the colors are desaturated. They are milder than regular highlighters. Now this is something else, some of you might blow some of your minds just because I've seen this before where people's minds have been blown. There are two ends to the mild liner. The first end has a pen clip and it's your chisel tip highlighter. They snap on nice and tight and like I said I've been using some of these for almost two years now and they have not dried out. They're still just as juicy <laughs> as they always were. And then on the other side is a fine tip highlighter pen. The pen itself it's not huge. It's fairly small. You stick the lid on the end it stays on pretty well and it extends the length of the highlighter just a skosh. I have no idea if the color names are on here. I can't read Japanese. The colors are on the cap and that's what I've always used to compare them. Now they come generally speaking in these five pack plastic packages. The only reason I've hung onto this one is so I could make this video and then I'm going to just take it off. I actually keep them in this pouch which came from the Amazon seller that I bought them from. Like it just came with the pack. These actually, the my original set did not come in these packages. They came in this pack already but th that seller I don't think is selling them anymore so I couldn't tell you. Just, just like a pen pouch. Like I said I've used the shit out of these on Scribbles That Matter. I'm just pulling out one of my old notebooks. So this was a habit tracker that I used and and it had several of the colors and as you can see some of the colors bleed through a little bit more than others I color these in I colored so they weren't necessarily one layer like you'll get shadowing with these mild liners but you won't get massive bleed through on the scribbles that matter paper we'll have to check on the Lois term here's a time tracker so you can see multiple colors here on the background and they're shadowing but there's not any major bleed through with one layer. In terms of durability, like I said, I have used the majority of these for almost two years now. And the way I have used them has almost entirely been for trackers. I've used them for coloring a little bit. I've used them for highlighting when I've been reading a little bit. But the majority has been for trackers, my time tracker, my pain tracker, and my habit trackers. So I've used the combination of both ends, the chisel tip and the fine tip end. And I will tell you, that the fine tip end does start to blunt down after some use. This is the fine tip, it's probably the end I've used more often than the chisel tip, to be honest. It does start to blunt down and wear down. So, I want to show you a comparison here between one of my most used ones, and this is one of my most used ones because this was the color I used to track sleep. So, I use this fine tip a lot. I'm going to show you the difference between one that has been used for two years, or plus almost two years, and a brand new one that I have barely used at all this one from the new pack. I've been using a couple of the new colors fairly often since the new year but this one I have barely touched. So that shows you the difference in the tip. This is still a nice crisp tip. This one is much more blunted down and kind of frayed you can see. It doesn't really bother me because I'm not doing detail writing or anything like that. I'm just coloring things in. So that doesn't bug me, but that might bug you if that's something you want. But now here's the chisel tip. There's a straight line because I've used both of these as well. And that's on the pointy edge of the line. And then here is this straight line. So as you can see with the chisel tip, it's not quite as pronounced, but there is some amount of wear down that broadens the line, which you don't necessarily see in the newer ones. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want your tips to stay, and remember I'm heavy handed, if you want your tips to stay nice and crisp, I might actually recommend you take a look at the Tombow Mono Line Highlighters, and I can do a video on those. You can let me know in the comments about that one too, if you would like. They're brighter than these colors, but their tips, the way that they're constructed, their chisel tips, they seem to be that they're gonna hang, like hold up a lot better over time. But like I said, these have gotten hella use and they are still just as juicy and just as saturated as they were when I started using them. So I have no complaints even with the blunting, but that's a full disclosure right there. Now before I do my swatches, what I do want to do is take a couple of colors here of highlighters and just show you the difference between a standard highlighter and a mild liner so you can kind of get the idea of the different types of colors. So this is one of the aforementioned Tombow Mono highlighters and this is the, the pink one and then this is the fluorescent pink, mild fluorescent pink mild liner. And so I'm going to compare these so you can kind of see the difference between a standard highlighter, which these ones have standard highlighter colors, and the mild liner colors which are more mild. 
I don't know how well you can see it on camera here, but Tombow Mono Edge Highlighter on the bottom is brighter and more saturated. And the pink, even though it is a fluorescent color, is still desaturated. So that really gives you an idea of the difference between these and standard highlighters. All of the colors, the, even the fluorescent ones, are still milder, <laughs> that's the best word to use, than regular highlighters. So now I am going to take my new swatch journal, which is a Loish term, so um, we'll see how these bleed or shadow through on this paper, which I have heard is much more shadowy ghosty than the scribbles that matter, but this just happens to be the notebook I have. We will test these out. I'll keep them in color packs, and you can see each color set as it compares to the other, so you can make decisions on if you want to buy them at all, and if you do, which ones you might want to purchase. Here are the colors, as you can see. I didn't really plan this swatch page out very well, but I kept them kind of together in a group. So before we do anything else, let's look at the, the bleed through. It looks like there came a second or two where a couple of these colors might have bled through, and it was all on the edges where I drew around and then I went colored it in. So I'm thinking if you do more than one layer, it might start to bleed through. Otherwise, it's going to just shadow. So looking at these colors, like I said, the warm and deep are not my personal favorites. I like the smoke blue, I like the magenta, but really as a set it's probably my least favorite. And looking at these as a set, actually I think the brights are my favorite set right now. The marigold I, I like okay, but I'm not thrilled with, but these four colors here are some of my favorites to the point where these three, the summer green, the lavender, and the fuchsia, are actually the colors I'm using for my pain tracker for 2019 because I like them so much. I find the cool and refined palette to be really pretty, but probably if you're looking for any sort of saturation, this might be the most disappointing. This one feels the most faded just because of the nature of the colors. Like these guys feel like faded highlighters, but that's sort of the thing. But these colors might pull the most soft. And if you're looking for something more saturated like these guys where they're still mild colors, but they are nice and bright, this might be more something more you like than this one, if that makes any sense at all. Overall though, I'm actually happy to have the whole set because I find it to be very versatile and you can use them in different ways. It just depends on what it is you might like. Now looking at these compared to their color on their caps, I feel like for the most part, they match. The colors I always had the most trouble with were these two, the vermilion, and the red. I use both of these on my time tracker and I would always mix them up in my head. Even though they do match their color, for some reason I could not wrap my mind around them when they were all mixed up in a bag together. The other colors you might wanna be careful with if you have the whole set in terms of figuring out which ones which are the smoke blue and the dark blue, even though again they match. All of the colors match their caps. If there's any sort of darkness, like say the brown to the brown, it's just because the color of the cap is not as desaturated as the actual color of the highlighter. But these two colors in the bag tend to be mixed up for me, but on paper they look different. The two that I think are the closest to each other, and it actually became a problem for me in my time tracking because they were two things I did a lot. I used one for church and one for I don't remember what it was because I stopped using it because they were so close together and that's the blue and the blue green. There is a difference in the color. I don't know how well it picks up on camera. The blue green is much more of an aqua and the blue is more of a straight blue. But when you put them next to each other, like in something like a time tracker, they can be difficult to dis to like tell the difference between. Other than those two though, even the yellows and stuff are different enough where you really won't have that kind of a problem. It's just these two out of all of the colors that I struggled with the hardest. Now I do find that this dark gray and the brown specifically because they are darker colors and because of the color of them, 
those ones tended to be the least useful to me as highlighters. Not as trackers or anything like that, but when I'm highlighting a book or something I'm reading, all of these like kind of more saturated colors are not great from my experience for highlighting when you're highlighting like something you're reading because it makes it a little harder to read. Most of the other ones are so mild they don't matter. Obviously I like them. I've been using them for almost two years and I have no plans to stop. They actually have a place of honor in my top drawer, my top desk drawer next to me where I keep my tape runners and my note cards and my notepads and like my stapler and my eraser, all the things I touch on a regular basis. My mild liners are in that drawer because I use them daily. So I, 10 out of 10 recommend these if they're a style and a color that you like. If you are not a fan of the mildness, then hell no. But as for quality and as for longevity, I can fully recommend these because I have used the shit out of them and I will continue to do so. So if you would, are interested in having me look at other highlighters, I would be down. It's not usually something I look into because they're not writing pens, but the Stabilo ones have me interested. So if you would like me to look at more highlighters or any other kinds of pens, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video.